Today we're going to replace the transmission mounts on this 2001 uh, 740i E38 BMW. Uh, <clears throat> we've already done the motor mounts, uh, that's on a separate video. Uh, please refer to that and I think you'll find it very instructional. So there's a number of things that we need to be aware of, as always on these videos. One of which is that you need to be safe. So be sure you get your wheels chalked if you're going to do it on the ground. If you're doing it on a lift, be sure you get the locks in place. Do all those things to keep yourself safe. Uh, and that will make your experience uh, a lot better than going to the hospital. So please be safe. Be aware that the uh, exhaust pipes go right over one of the bolts you have to remove from the transmission mount, uh, transmission support bracket, in order to get at the uh, transmission mounts. Now, this can be a bit tricky, and you're going to have to use your best judgment in terms of how you do that. But we'll get to that a little bit later on in the video. I just want to make you aware of that up front, that this can be an issue if you're, uh, when you're doing these uh, transmission mounts yourself. As you can see, once you're underneath the car, there's some aluminum baffles that are under there for catching the heat off of the exhaust manifolds and the uh, exhaust pipes. So some people like to just bend them out of the way. Personally, my favorite is just to go ahead and remove them. Uh, to remove them, you'll need um, an 8 and a 10 millimeter socket, or um, you'll need a uh, 8 and a 10 millimeter box open in wrench. They're just small little screws. They're not in there tight. Uh, you just need to remove them. Uh, be cautious that you're not tearing out any of the uh, support holes. So we're going to now remove those uh, aluminum protectors. Now, the next part is best to do this before you start loosening up any of the other uh, bolts or nuts on this uh, particular repair. And that is, you'll notice here that we have a uh, uh, very heavy black uh, anodized piece of aluminum that's a vibration dampener uh, to help absorb some of the um, jarring that may go on as the transmission shifts. Remember, this is a fairly high performance car, so the transmission can shift fairly difficult, or it can be very sharp when it shifts. So to do that, you're going to need a 18 millimeter socket to get that off. It's going to be difficult. It's on there very, very tight. So you're going to need to get yourself a real husky uh, uh, jigger bar to take that off. So be sure you take that off first, because you're going to find that when you get to removing the motor mounts that that will be in your way when you're working on the passenger side uh, motor mount. So remove that first. So that's what we're going to do next. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to support the transmission. Now we're going to use a scissors jack and in order to be sure we don't dent the uh, lower plate we're going to use this large piece of plywood. And you don't need to jack it up. All you need to do is to put enough tension on it to where the scissors jack is holding up that transmission. Uh, you may want to later move the transmission up a little bit. It's really not required in the way we're going to do it. I know others say to go ahead and jack it up by several inches. I'm not a fan of that. Now that we have the transmission properly supported, we're going to remove the uh, lower bolts off of the uh, motor mounts. And so these are the lower bolts on the motor mounts. We're gonna remove those. Now, after we remove those, we're now going to take off the six bolts that are holding the support bracket uh, in place. Now, let's talk about the one that's on the, underneath the um, exhaust pipe first. That can be a very tricky one to get to, and there's a couple of different ways to get to that one. Uh, you can use an offset wrench. Now all of the bolts that we're going to be dealing with are 13 millimeter. So from here on out, all you need is 13 millimeter tools. So you can use an offset wrench to get in there and to uh, take it out. Uh, you may find it a little easier if you have a sharper 
angle. Now this happens to be a 45 degree offset here. You can get them at 75 degrees where it comes up a lot sharper. So it comes up a lot sharper here. And that might sit in there a little firmer for you. Now while we're talking about this, I do wanna caution you about rounding off the bolts. Often when we're dealing with sockets, and extensions, we automatically think about holding the top of the socket here to keep it from torquing over as we're trying to tighten things or loosen things. As you should know, uh, as it torques over, you're going to round out the bolt on here. Now with a socket, it's fairly easy to hold on to that top and give yourself that support. With an offset wrench, you don't have that ability to grab up here. So remember that you've still got an angle torque right here that can pry that off of the bolt. So if you use one of these, be sure you're very cautious in terms of stabilizing it and holding it very flat on that nut. For our purposes, we used a uh, little quarter inch drive. Now these bolts, depending upon who put them in, are not torqued real tight. So we used a little 13 millimeter socket on a quarter inch uh, uh, bar, drive bar, and it did take some pressure, but we did get it loose. And that way the exhaust pipe was sitting up above it and we had enough room to be able to loosen it. Once it's loosened, it comes out fairly easily just using your fingers. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Just remember you've got a real tight space on that rear uh, bolt. Now the other four bolts, you'll wanna take a uh, 3 8 inch ratchet on a short extension with a 13 millimeter socket. Again, stabilize the top of it as you're taking those bolts out, or at least as you get the initial uh, twist on those bolts before taking them out. Now we're taking these completely out. Others say just to loosen them a little bit to let that drop down. I prefer to take it out completely. Uh, well, it doesn't come out completely. I should back up just a moment and say, it'll come down and you can slide it back away from the motor mounts. And that will give you the clearance to be able to finish removing the bottom part of the motor mounts. So to remove the nuts on the top of the uh, transmission mount, you're gonna need to use a box open end wrench. Uh, you might be able to get the box side on, uh, or the open side, whatever side you wish to use. I use the box inside myself. Now, be aware that you only have to just loosen the nut just a couple of turns in order to get them out because they slide out. And as you notice that they have a little knob on there to uh, help keep them aligned properly. So as you slide those out, uh, that'll come right out. The knob will come right out and then the whole motor mount uh, comes out and you're now able to uh, continue cleaning up and getting ready to put in the replacement uh, transmission mounts. All right, now that we've cleaned up and we've got everything ready for the new transmission mounts, we're gonna put the nut back on the top, but we need to leave enough slop for it to slide into that slot. Now, the knob that sticks up is not as tall as the thickness of that aluminum plate. So all we do is make sure we're a little above that, slide it in place, and then take your uh, 13 millimeter box open in wrench and tighten it up. You don't need to leave it loose. At this point, you can tighten it up uh, and you're good to go on reassembling everything. So at this point, you're just doing the reverse of the disassembly. You're putting everything back in place. Uh, I do suggest that you leave the um, transmission uh, support bracket a little loose after you get the bolts in so you can make sure that everything lines up properly uh, because there are some little bit of a weird small angles there that you might need to juggle to make sure you get the bolts all in. If you start tightening down one bolt, you may make it very difficult to get another one in. So get all the bolts back in place, 
then go back and tighten them all up uh, and get a good snug tightness on them. Uh, also remember to put in the nut on the bottom part of the transmission mount that's there on the support bracket. From there, you'll just finish putting everything back together again. You'll put the, uh, uh, the vibration dampener back on. You'll uh, take and lower the uh, scissor jack from the transmission and you'll put in the uh, heat baffles so that they'll be back in place. And then you should be good to go.